Hello and welcome to Church at Home again, an opportunity for you to perhaps learn more about the Christian faith, an opportunity for people who aren't able to go to church at the moment to share together in this way in their various homes, an opportunity for you to meet with God in the comfort of your own home. I recently heard that there are two people watching in New Zealand and Australia who used to live in Widrington Station and have seen it on Witty Chit Chat, which is very exciting. This week I've chosen the theme of our hearts in relation to this unprecedented season, this strange time in our lives. It affects our relationships with each other, our families, friends, our neighbours and total strangers and also our relationship with God who created us, who gave us life and gave us hearts and made us relational beings. But to begin with, let's still our hearts and minds as I light our candle. <clears throat> and we recognise the presence of God with us now. We pray this prayer together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily praise your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to praise God with this first hymn, And Can It Be?
With the weather being so good, we've spent more time, haven't we, outdoors, walking, cycling. Yes, we've cycled, are you impressed? Actually, uh, we only did it once, Ian got a slow puncture and we haven't been out since, but I know many of you have been doing this and gardening, and we've been enjoying the outside world, the created world. We all recognize the, the heart shape, symbolizing love, but when I were Googled the word heart, I found some wonderful images of heart shapes that have naturally occurred in nature. And so I thought I'd share them with you right now as we start thinking about hearts. It's amazing to think that they're out there if we've got eyes to see them, isn't it? Do you think it's easier to look for good things or bad things? I think when we're with people we can be quite negative, uh, perhaps a bit gossipy, fault-finding, nitpicking. When we're with God we ha happily chat to him in prayer perhaps about the things that we want to thank him for, but we're a lot slower when it comes to thinking about the not-so-good things, the things that we have failed him in. The prayer we prayed a few moments earlier helps us to bring ourselves into God's presence, recognising that he is the almighty God who knows everything about us. Thankfully he still loves us and he wants us to be honest with him. We don't need to try and hide, we don't have to put a mask on for he knows the secrets of our hearts. I'm going to show you a video clip now by um, two men called the Skit Guys, uh, they're Christian comedians. We break into the middle of a conversation between the Holy Spirit, one of them, also God, and also the man. The man could be any one of us. I see myself in this man. The Holy Spirit is gently trying to help the man see himself as he really is, see him as God sees, and to be honest with himself. We're kidding ourselves if we think we can hide from God. He knows us through and through, even better than we know ourselves. I hope you enjoy this. Okay, cool. I'll be the Holy Ghost, yeah. all right? I'm like Casper. I'm friendly, but I'm holy, all right? Yeah. <laughs> you can just call me HG, all right? Uh -huh. Okay. I'll, I'll call you God, but it'll be implied that you're the Holy Spirit. You are that still small voice. That's what that is. <laughs> I thought it was aliens. No. <laughs> Feels so much better. <laughs> okay. All right. So... All right, so we'll just keep, okay. Right. Search me, oh God. All righty. <laughs> whoa, 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 no, you are not. Yep, no. Yep, you just relax. I can't. All right, I relax. can't relax. No. A lot easier if you're relaxed. I can't let me, no. no, let me just get you to move right over here. Uh -huh. All right, just, here we go. Just take a seat. Here ah! we go. Ah! What are you doing? I thought you were... Uh... No, I don't like to get fingerprints on this. Oh. Okay. What did you think I was I, doing? I, I, So what, 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 what is this? Uh, this is your heart right here. See that? Uh -huh. That's your heart. Uh -huh. And, um, well, your heart has muck and guck on it. 
My heart has muck and guck. Yeah. Muck and guck. I, I mean, that's what I see right there. I see muck, guck, and oh, there's some yuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your heart has muck, guck, and yuck, like a lifetime of, of bad choices covered with muck, guck, and yuck. Muck, guck, and yuck. Seriously, that's what the Holy Spirit's going to say, muck, guck, yuck. Seriously, muck, guck, yuck. Okay. You want serious? Sure. I'll give you serious. Your heart is a wellspring of life. You should guard it with all that you are because there is a great battle going on for the allegiance of your heart. And most times you're doing lukewarm at best. Yeah. Okay. Um, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test my thoughts. There you go. What are these? Those are your thoughts. These are my thoughts? Yeah. Not my thoughts. Yeah, they no are. Way to, these are my thoughts. Wow, wow. How did you get a hold of my thoughts? Hello. Right, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, this is something for me to peruse a little bit later, and I will do that, okay? This, you know, the, let's just go through them right now. Go through my thoughts? Yeah. I, I don't want to, no, no, not, not in front of all these people. I don't want to go through my thoughts in front of these people. Why not? Well, I mean, they're going to think what I think of. They're thinking about my thoughts, and those are my thoughts that I'm thinking. If they're thinking my thoughts, I'm thinking, wow, those are my thoughts that they're thinking. That's a lot of thoughts to be thinking, you think? Fortunately, I'm the Holy Spirit, so I understand those groanings. <laughs> They're a great duo, aren't they? With a powerful ministry using humor to help us to be more real, be more honest, to be more like Jesus, perhaps. We'll see more of them before we finish today, but for now, I think it would be good to come to God and be honest with him and ourselves, to bring the areas of our lives where we failed him, where we've let him down, and probably let ourselves down as well. In the Bible it says, God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us. Isn't that amazing? What we deserve is punishment for our wrongdoing, but God instead says he'll forgive us. In our heart of hearts, you see, we often use that word, don't we? In our heart of hearts, we know we live with the tension between the person we are and the person we would like to be. Frederick Buechner, an American theologian, writer and priest says, to confess your sins to God is not to tell him anything he doesn't already know. Until you confess them, however, they are an abyss between you. When you confess them, they become the bridge between us and God. So let's find that bridge now as we come to say sorry to God. Please join in with the words in blue if you feel able to be honest with God, or you can just be silent before him as he looks on you with love and compassion. I'm leaving a few moments of quiet to reflect on our hearts as we consider the things we need to say sorry for now. Lord, I ask forgiveness for all that I have done wrong. Forgive me when I deceive myself into thinking that I am okay as I am that my faults are minor ones which I can overlook. Shine your light on me now. Because God loves us, he forgives us. May the God of love and power, who hears your prayers, forgive you and free you, heal you and strengthen you with his risen new life. Amen. Amen. So let's enjoy the next song, knowing we've crossed the bridge and have been forgiven. It's Shine, Jesus Shine.
Today I said our theme was the heart. Whilst preparing this, I thought that we would use the theme to explore things like our feelings, which might have caused people to literally switch off and go into the other room. So instead, I've been thinking about passions or beliefs and convictions which go from our heads to our hearts and then are expressed in actions, things that we have been driven to do or compelled in, in ways to act. I mean, a good example at the moment would be compassion. All this time through the pandemic, we have watched frontline key workers risking their lives to care for others. But in a smaller, no lesser way, we have seen ordinary people, community figures, go themselves or organise others to go and help not just their friends and their families, but strangers, maybe neighbours who were strangers but aren't any longer. We have seen so much compassion expressed through wondrous, wonderful, generous, selfless, loving, caring acts that have moved people to do amazing, extraordinary things for others, putting themselves out and at risk. Captain Tom is a good example, soon to be Sir Tom, work, walking a hundred lengths of his garden, hoping to raise a thousand pounds for the NHS. And now he's raised over 32 million because people's hearts were touched by his actions and then they were moved to donate. And there've been many other causes and local needs met in the similar ways. So what about your heart right now? No, I don't mean physically, not your blood pump. We say things like that, don't we? We say, let's have a heart to heart. So now in the privacy of your own home or perhaps inside your own head, can we consider, can we think about your innermost selves? What makes you tick? How we feel? Can we be honest with ourselves? How are you coping with life right now? There's been considerable fear and worry during the pandemic, fear of the virus, fear of death, fear of losing employment, fear of change, fear for loved ones near and far. In those early days, when I wasn't feeling well, I was frightened. I didn't know what was happening. Nobody did. There's been much heartache, everyone separated by the lockdown. And then there's the 35,000 people who have died in the UK so far. So many people, broken hearted, frail hearted. Some may even feel that God isn't doing his bit and they might just be feeling hard hearted towards God. So I thought we'd have a look and see what the Bible has to say about the heart. It's a central theme in the Bible. The heart is viewed as a key part of our spiritual makeup. It's seen as the seat of our emotions, our desires and will, and it's what drives our behaviour. The Bible talks about our hearts when referring to our relationship with God, which is vertical, God and us, but also with others, uh, horizontal relationships. And that reminds me of the cross. It's important to remember that our relationship is with God and with other people, because God invites us to be in a good relationship with him and then also in a good relationship with others. But don't forget also, we need to be in a good relationship with ourselves. So Jane's going to read for us now, just a few short verses from different parts of the Bible about the heart. Proverbs 4 verse 23. Above all else, guard your heart. Everything you do flows from it. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7b The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. Psalm 51 verse 10 Create in me a pure heart, God, and make my spirit right again. Psalm 139 verses 1 and 2, 23 and 24. Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me 
and lead me in the way everlasting. Now, of course, we can relate to God with all of our being. We are physical, mental, emotional, spiritual people, needing all aspects of that to be working together, our hearts, our minds, our soul and our strength. We'd all like to believe that people in their hearts are essentially good people. But the Bible also says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. We see that in many ways, not just in murderers or paedophiles, but in ordinary lives, people's hearts are sick, hurting, broken. Someone once said, the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. God gave us free will and the ability to choose between good and bad, and we fail in many ways to make the right choices. Humanity has a heart problem, we could say. It needs a change of heart or something more permanent, perhaps a heart transplant. So I've got one more verse for you from the Bible, from Ezekiel in the Old Testament, chapter 36, verse 26. God says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So how are we really feeling deep down inside? I find my feelings have changed daily, weekly, on a bit of a roller corona coaster ride, as I've heard it called recently. We're all very much in the same boat. How are we coping? Some people are quite contented, or say they are. Others are feeling very unsettled, mixed up, perhaps feeling guilty about something, or worried, or hopeless, or maybe even at the end of their tether. I want you to I want to remind you that God is with you. He sees your heart, still loves you and is there to help you. We're going to watch the second part of the skit guy's sketch. I, I, I have a hang up and I will work on this. All right. I will work on it. OK, but it's it's, it's I mean, but, well, I mean, does it really matter what I think? Oh, yeah. As you think, as you think in your heart, that's who you are. Listen, you sow a thought you reap an action. You sow an action, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap a lifestyle. And it all begins with your thoughts. But here's the deal. I can't erase everything in this book. I mean, it's my uh, past. I'm not asking you to erase it. I'm asking you to trust me with the story that I'm weaving through your life. It's called history for a reason. History, his story. Exactly. Okay, well, that's good, though. Search me on God, know my heart, test my thoughts. That's a lot, right? It's a great place to start, but I'd, I'd like to go deeper. Do we have to? We don't. We don't have to go deeper. And to be honest with you, most of my children don't even make it to this point. But I have great plans for you. And I don't want you to miss out on anything. So I hope you'll trust me. Okay. Um, search me, oh God. Know my heart. Test my thoughts. See if there's anything in me that makes you sad. It's a simple but excellent point the Holy Spirit makes, isn't it? As you think in your heart, that is who you are. You sow a thought, you reap an action. You sow an action, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap a lifestyle. And it all begins with your thoughts. So it's really important what's in our hearts. That is why we prayed right at the start, asking God to cleanse the thoughts of our hearts. Thinking, attitudes, feelings and actions are all so interconnected. God's people in the Old Testament struggled with their relationship with God and when these words from Ezekiel were written it was at a time when they had gone their own way and had done many wrong things. It seemed that they were hopeless cases. They couldn't live better godly holy lives that they were hard-hearted, cold and unresponsive towards God. We have aspirations, attitudes, motivations which strongly affect our relationship with God. I want to encourage you that we don't have to be dictated to by our hearts. We don't need to say, well, that's the way I am, or I've always been like this, or I just can't shake this off. God comes to us and he helps us and he says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, if that's what you want. 
God offers us everything that we need to live our lives well, to cope with all that life throws at us, or that life has inflicted on us. He can give us the heart transplant that is so needed to replace our hearts of stone and give us a heart of flesh, to help us to be willing to change, to be hopeful that we can be different in the future. As always, it isn't in our own strength that this happens, only by the grace of God. Only through what Jesus did on the cross can we come to God and open our hearts before him and ask to do a healing work in us. All we have to do though is open up to him and give him, give him permission to work in us. We're going to pray some prayers now. Ray's going to lead them for us. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Let us pray. When I say, Father, create in me a clean heart, the response, renew a right spirit within me. Father, we humble ourselves before you in prayer and plead to you as those you have charged to care for your most wonderful creation. A world so loved by you that you sacrificed yourself in your only son that we, the jewel of your creation, might be forgiven and in communion with you. Father, create in me a clean heart. Father, in the midst of this world pandemic, surrounded by sickness and suffering, we pray for those affected by it in mind, body or spirit. Father, may they know your healing and strengthening presence and feel the compassion of your heart in their own. Father, create in me a clean heart. Father, in this time of trial that comes as a two-edged sword, highlighting both the good and evil in man, we lift up to you all who have worked and sacrificed in order to serve and to save at this time. We acknowledge too the evil that is present, especially the selfishness and greed that is fueling the destruction of your world. Help us to see how we all might stand against it and care for your creation as you commanded us. Father, create in me a clean heart. Father, it is the desire of your heart that none should perish. You stand at the door of our hearts, longing to be invited in, that we might be cleansed and forgiven and receive the joy of eternal life. We pray for all who have died and ask your blessing on those who have mourned their passing. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died that we might live. Create in me a clean heart and renew your right spirit within me. Amen. In the sketch, the Holy Spirit talked about us going deeper with God and the man wasn't too keen, was he? But you don't have to go deeper, he says. But God says, I have a better plan for your life. A life lived with God, open heartedly, allowing him to be work at work in you. It may be a big issue, it may be just something small, but we can come to him and ask him to do his work in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember God said, I will give you a new heart and put a right spirit in you. God never asks us to do something without also giving us the help to do it, a new spirit. This will enable us for this work to happen in us. In other faiths, there's much emphasis on trying to be good, keeping laws, to be saved, or by doing special pilgrimages or special acts to please their gods. But God doesn't want us to try and earn his love or make ourselves better. He freely gives it to us. All we need to do is ask for his help and accept it. For some, this hits their pride quite hard. To have to accept we need God? 
But I have found over the 46 years that I've been following Jesus, it works really well to let that pride go. And I've seen again and again that God does know best and it gets far better results than if I tried to do it myself. And we don't just come to God once. This is something we need to do again and again throughout our lives. I'm going to play a song that Lauren Daigle sings, Here's My Heart, Lord. She offers God her heart. She sings, Here's My Heart, God, or Here's My Heart, Lord, and repeatedly asks, Speak what is true. There's no point in us coming to God, expecting him to collude with us, or to agree with our excuses, or to just make us feel better. What we need is our hearts changing, and that can be painful but it is for the better. In fact, it's for the best. As this song plays through, you could join in. It's simple, it's reflective. It gives you time to think about the words, but why not open your heart to God as you listen or sing? Make the words your own prayer, bringing what you want to him, what you need to bring to him. And as you do, his spirit will come and help you to bring healing or maybe just hold you at this difficult time. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true Here's my heart Lord Here's my heart Lord Here's my heart Lord Speak what is true I am found I am yours, I am love. 
you see how the words changed from here's my heart, Lord, to here's my life, God, Lord. Our hearts are our lives in God's eyes. That all that we are, all that we think, we feel, believe, all the good and the bad in us, he loves us and is wanting us to bring it to him. And you know what? When our hearts and lives are given over to God, we become much nicer people to live with. Not all of the time, Ian will tell you that. But to be in relationship with him, as our relationship with God, remember the vertical relationship with God is put right, we manage our other relationships with other people better, our horizontal ones. And it's an important part of following Jesus because it isn't just about being made right with God that we do these things. It is important, but it enables us to be in right relationships with others, for us to be more like Jesus and then to go out into the world and be like Jesus to others, to strangers. We've got one more hymn before we finish. This one's quite a challenging one. I think you'll enjoy the tune. Will you come and follow me? There's a question.
hope you found it helpful this week, looking at our hearts. It hasn't been easy. It's not something that we can do and feel like it's a, a joy ride. It's a hard thing to do, to be honest with ourselves. It came out in one of the verses of that song, Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found? Will you use the faith you found this week? The things you've learnt to shape the world around through God's sight and touch and sound in us and through us. So as you go, wherever you go this week, I pray that you may know your heart warmed and strengthened by God. I pray that you may know you, Jesus walking beside you every step of the way. And I ask that you might know the Holy Spirit helping you to be all that he wants you to be. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for being here again this week and any time over the week you might like to come back to this service that would be fine and I hope you'll join us again next week. Thanks to Ian and to Ray and Jane for their help. See you next week.